President Trump is demanding an investigation into last week's anonymous op-ed warning about his mental fitness and slamming the author of a new book about the chaos at his White House. For more on this, it's time for a closer look. One of the weirdest aspects of having Donald Trump as president is the fact that every few months or so, people working at the highest levels of government have to put down everything they're doing and hunt for the anonymous mole who just called the president a brain-dead moron. <laughs> Same thing over and over. Someone calls the president an idiot, or they call him a fifth grader, or they leak a transcript of him telling the president of Mexico he wants a pinata for his birthday. <laughs> and then serious government officials and four-star generals have to issue so many denials, they start to sound like Shaggy. Wasn't me. <laughs> and sure enough, Sure enough, the government is once again grinding to a halt as the president demands that the attorney general use actual law enforcement resources to investigate who wrote last week's anonymous op-ed in the New York Times. President Trump is now calling on Attorney General Jeff Sessions to track down that unnamed senior official behind that scathing New York Times editorial. Do you think Jeff Sessions should be investigating who the author of the op-ed piece was or who some of these people I think are so, because to? I think it's national security. Yeah, I would say... Jeff should be investigating who the author of that piece was, because I really believe it's national security. We're going to take a look at what he had, what he gave, what he's talking about, also where he is right now. He sounds like Sherlock Holmes after a concussion. <laughs> My dear Watson, we're going to find out who the suspect is, and where he is, and what he did, and who he was, and why I wear. <laughs> so, Trump. Trump apparently thinks a crime might have been committed by whoever wrote the op-ed. Yesterday, White House counselor Kellyanne Conway was asked on CNN what exactly that crime might be and didn't have an answer. President Trump has said that Jeff Sessions, the attorney general, should be investigating who the author of the piece is because of national security reasons. Is that a directive to DOJ to investigate? So, from what I understand, there can be an investigation if there is criminal activity, perhaps. And, and there doesn't the appear crime. to be any. I don't know that, and I don't think you know that. In other words, that's... What would the criminal activity be? It really depends on what else has been divulged by an individual. Anybody who would do this... But we read the op-ed. There was nothing... There was nothing... There are no national secrets to Anybody this. who would do this, you don't know what else they're saying. Has you think they, the person broke the law? Um, I don't know. I have no idea. You think that because he or no she wrote the op-ed, he might... He or she might have also broken the law. I have no idea, idea what I have no I have really no idea, nor do you. Yeah, we do. <laughs> we do because we all read the op-ed. There are no crimes in there. It's called I am part of the resistance inside the Trump administration, not I am part of the resistance inside the Trump administration and also I murdered a guy. The fact is, calling Donald Trump an incompetent moron is not a crime. It's not even new information. <laughs> and yet, he's very obviously freaked out by both the anonymous op-ed and famed journalist Bob Woodward's blockbuster new book, Fear. He brought it up repeatedly last week and tweeted obsessively about it again this morning. Quote, the Woodward book is a joke, he tweeted. Just another assault against me in a barrage of assaults using now disproven, unnamed, and anonymous sources. Many have already come forward to say the quotes by them, like the book, our fiction. Dems can't stand losing. I'll write the real book. Please do that. <laughs> I would love to see you try to write a book by yourself without a ghostwriter. And I mean, I mean a real book, not one of your airport books, because I'm pretty sure those books have exactly one word on each page. <laughs> I'm talking an actual book with chapters and an appendix. Of course, if you told Trump you need an appendix, he'd probably say, fine, just take Eric's. I gotta say... I gotta say, I love imagining Trump sitting at a typewriter, punching away at the keys with his stubby meat paws. He either types one finger at a time, grandpa style, or with palms fully open like he's playing whack-a-mole. Sad. Exclamation point. Trump has spent the last week fixated on these anonymous leaks from inside his own White House, warning the country that he's erratic and unstable. So he's responding by going on national TV and acting erratic and unstable. The latest act of resistance is the op-ed published in the failing New York Times by 
and an ominous, really an, an ominous, gutless coward. Hmm. Who, who do you think it was? Maybe it's the same person who replaced your denture adhesive with silly putty? Anonymous. But it's not surprising to me that Trump wouldn't know how to pronounce the word anonymous, since he's never done anything anonymously in his life. If he had been the gossip girl, he would have signed the notes XOXO Donald J. Trump. But this... This is one of the most surreal aspects of the moment we're in. The president of the United States regularly has to go on TV and try to convince people that he's not out of his mind. In fact, last week, he just straight up asked his supporters to tell him that he's good at his job. I beat all these senators, all these governors, all these brilliant political minds. Then I beat the other side. And then I listen, is he competent? I think I'm pretty competent, right? Don't you think so? As a general rule, it's never good when you're the president and you have to go on TV and ask your supporters, do you think I'm competent? If I was about to go under and my surgeon said to me, do you think I'm competent? I'd say, you know what? I'll keep the gallstones. Trump also argued that years from now, his speeches would be viewed favorably by history, drawing a parallel with Abraham Lincoln that made absolutely no sense. You know, when Abraham Lincoln made the Gettysburg Address speech, the great speech, do you know he was ridiculed? He was ridiculed. He went up to Gettysburg, and he delivered that speech, the Gettysburg Address, and he was excoriated by the fake news. They had fake news. That he was... Excoriated. They said it was a terrible, terrible speech. They said it was far too short. It's not long. Many of us know it by memory. No. <laughs> you do not know the Gettysburg Address by memory. I doubt you know your own address by memory. <laughs> it's, uh... Yeah, three large pizzas. It's a well, it's a White House. <laughs> it's just a big White House. <laughs> so now Trump's White House is engaged in an aggressive attempt to hunt down and expose the leakers in his government who think he's out of his mind, and they've reportedly considered some extreme measures. Advisors to the president are considering all their options, including the idea of a lie detector test. You want Trump staffers to take lie detector tests? That thing's gonna start freaking out as soon as you get inside the building. <laughs> bringing a lie detector test inside this White House is like bringing a Geiger counter to Chernobyl. <laughs> All right, let's start with you, Kellyanne. No, oh, uh, never mind. Well, let's start with you, John Kelly. Yeah, you know what? Let's just start with the president. We have a paranoid president who's demanding investigations of his critics. If you're looking for the constitutional crisis, it's here. And it's being aided and abetted by people whose names we don't even know. People who are... Anonymous. This has been a closer look.